Hey Mohawk, this week we went to the Carpe Noctum event and we checked out how students were preparing for exams. And we also spoke to... Brad Duguid, Minister of Economic Development. Take a look. Hello Mohawk, today I'm here at the Carpe Noctum, which is a tutoring session at the ARNI. And uh, I'm with Talin, who is in which program? Office Executive Administration program. And I will be graduating in April. This is my second year. All right. And do you have to be in the program that you're tutoring for? Yes, absolutely. Uh, you have to be a second year student with uh, grade 75% at least uh, in order to be able to uh, tutor for your program. And are there any other requirements that you need to meet before you can be allowed to tutor? I believe uh, we have to be full-time students and uh, yeah, I think the require most of the requirement is 75%. Um, of course, you have to go through an interview process and if they accept you, they send you an email and then you start, you sign some contracts and then you start working. All right. And do people have to sign up beforehand for this event? Uh, no, they don't have to. Uh, they just uh, come in and I think they are signing at the entrance. All right. And is this the first time that something like this has happened or are there different types of tutoring sessions throughout the year? I think this is our first time, but uh, we're hoping to have a good success, a good turnout, and then probably they will do it again. So I'm here with Megan Pratt, one of the organizers of Carpe Noctum. And Megan, can you tell me a little bit about what was involved in the planning of this event? Absolutely. So down in the Learning Support Center, we see a lot of students who try to seek support for tutoring, uh, specifically towards the exam period. So what we tried to do was capitalize upon that by offering a night of free tutoring and academic support where students did not need to book any appointments or do any pre-registration, hoping to really help students get prepared for exams and get them against the whole procrastination method that we typically see happening. And do you find that there are certain subjects that people come out more for than other ones? So typically we do have a lot of students who come for engineering, business, a lot of the writing center and the sciences as well, but we see a wide variety of students seeking tutoring uh, down in the Learning Support Center and thankfully we have roughly over 100 tutors actually this semester across all three campuses who can support them. So this is a campus-wide event? Yes, so this semester is the first time we're running it and we are only running it at Fennel, but if it goes well, which it looks like it is so far, um, we're hoping might be able to repeat it in future semesters. All right, and is there anything about the planning of the event that was a little more difficult to do? Um, honestly, not really. We work with an amazing team down in the Learning Support Center. So Andrea Brinesi, Tina Bradjic, we also had an SSA, Jessica Van Horen, and a faculty coach, Kathy Ozels, who were amazing in helping the process. Um, it was just a lot of coordination, you know, getting the food, getting the tutors, but once we had the rhythm going and once we had the energy, we were all pretty much on board and we were able to roll it out pretty smoothly. I'm here with Mike, one of the tutors at Carpe Noctum. And Mike, what subject do you tutor? I tutor mechanical engineering. And what do you find that the majority of students have trouble with in that subject? Uh, students have trouble with courses like math, um, AutoCAD, and then some more uh, technical courses like properties of materials and machine design. And that's pretty much the extent of what I tutor. And how was the, um, the hiring process for you to become a tutor? Oh, it was great. It was very straightforward. Uh, felt very welcomed into the system. It was, uh, it was a pleasure to be a part of this, that's for sure. And is this the first time that you've been part of a tutoring event such as this one? Yeah, definitely. I've been a tutor for two years and this is the first event like this. And how are the perks? The perks are good. <laughs> hey Mohawk, we're here with uh, Brad Duguid, Minister of Economic Development. Uh, so why are you in Hamilton today? Well, I'm here today. I was meeting with manufacturers earlier because that's a, uh, a new and exciting uh, uh, revolution going on right now in that sector. Uh, and leading that revolution, I think, uh, are many of the technologies being developed here at Mohawk. So it was fitting to meet with our manufacturing sector and then come to Mohawk and see some of the next generation of manufacturing being worked on here. So you got a chance to see the Additive uh, Manufacturing Resource Center. Uh, what did you see when you were in there? Well, that was the first time I've ever been able to see 3D printing in action. Uh, so now I have a, a better opportunity to be able to communicate uh, how it actually works. Uh, this is an area that I think Ontario has to own. Uh, we're competing in a fiercely competitive global economy. We need to be at the cutting edge when it comes to manufacturing technology. If we can maintain our position on that cutting edge, we're going to continue to ensure that manufacturing is the backbone of our economy here in Ontario. Now, uh, what is your opinion on Mohawk itself right now? Well, it's, it's a hub of innovation. Uh, the, uh, it's crucial to our, our, uh, our future. In many ways, I think Mohawk is the go-between between the older manufacturing economy 
and the next generation manufacturing economy because manufacturing is going to continue to be an important part of Ontario's economy, important part of our, our ability to generate wealth and provide opportunities for our next generation of young people. What Mohawk is, is it's that bridge between old manufacturing and next generation manufacturing. So it's crucial to our economic future. Okay. Uh, now let's talk about colleges and their role in Ontario. Where what do you think their role is when it comes to uh, economic growth in Ontario? Well, we're fortunate in this province to have some of the best institutions, both colleges and universities anywhere in the world today. Our college sector has really brought change uh, to our post-secondary system. Uh, it's been the first uh, to, to come forward with, with across-the-board opportunities when it comes to uh, utilizing technology to teach, like digital technology and uh, online learning. Uh, colleges didn't have to be uh, pulled kicking and screaming. They were there at the forefront. And now you can see uh, their, their, their partnerships with business uh, and experiential learning are second to none. So there's a reason why we're producing the best quality talent anywhere in the world today. And that's because our college system and our university systems have been able to adopt to be able to do that. Thanks so much for uh, talking to us today. Very nice to, to meet you, Dyson. Uh, you terrific. Really uh, good to be here today. Yeah. Take care. Thank you. Carpe, noc Carpe Noctum? <laughs> yeah, I almost said Nocturne. Carpe Noctum? I said that right? Carpe Noctum? I keep almost saying Carpe Nocturne. So people are texting it to me and they're doing carpet. Carpet. Carpet Noctum. I'm like, it's not a night run. <laughs> <laughs> Did I do that right? Economic development, right? Is it on? Okay. <laughs> it go oh, it's going. Right, let me gather myself. Are you going to say words yet? No. <laughs> I'm building suspense. Hey, Mohawk. This week, I talked to the economic development minute. Hey, Mohawk. Wait, on this no, week, sorry, of I was a ball. I'm ready. <laughs> yeah, Should have got me an extra large coffee, Sean. <laughs> Mohawk, on this week of MoCast, I talked to, oh, what's his name? Brad do you want to intro this? You do it. I'm not meant to intro. 